Okay. <laughs> Hello, holy friends and family. I'm so happy to have you here with me today. You are placed inside the roots of a tree that has been lifted up out of the ground. And I did ask for permission and I was told yes, that I could place you there. So interesting perspective. But today I wanted to talk about something that is very potent in my life right now. <sighs> and that is the show that a lot of people will fall into. These are people-pleasing traits, belief systems, programs that there is a show going on that needs to be performed and that there is a character that needs to be fulfilled. Let me just grab my notes. So within the show and within this, one of my teachers said to me, you know, it's wanting to dance for other people, wanting to be seen as somebody that is pleasing, that is comforting, that is safe to be around at all times. For a really long time, I believed that that was the best quality a person could have and I still do believe that safety is one of the most gracious traits that you can really take into your life is to be a safe space for other people but within that is this toxicity that makes us pleasing and it makes us really small and repressed inside of ourselves and inside of who we truly are and the reason that this is so harmful is because it detaches us from ourself. It creates anxiety. It creates this hollowness inside the being where they're not in service anymore because if you are just pleasing others, you're not telling them what they truly need to hear and you're not assisting their growth and their journey and you're not being the, the person that you were sent here to be. If you're not in your authenticity, and if we're pleasing others all of the time, then we're not in that authenticity. So the show comes about and from it, it creates all of these things. But where does the show really come from? It normally comes from places of guilt. So we feel extremely guilty. We feel really small. Maybe once in our childhood, we were told that to be sweet and to be exactly what others need us to be is the best like that's what you should be that's what you should try to become and when I think back to my childhood and to you know where did this come from this need to please others to put on the show to dance for others to to crumble if other people feel hurt by me whether or not that is like something that I put onto them, whether and like if they just disagree with me, in some ways I feel bad. I feel like, oh, I'm creating polarity between us, but that is true attraction. So that is a very interesting conversation. Polarity, which has its toxicities as well. But when there is contrast, that's like two magnets with opposite ends, they pull together. So truly when we are in contrast with other people, it creates this attraction. And so, so all of that kind of becomes reversed when we think, oh, I need to please other people all of the time. That is not us working within the laws of creation. Um, So the show really feeds into all of these painful experiences in our life. It really deters us from being authentic. It really deters us from coming into our mission. And it creates this anxiety of being self. And all of these things really stunt us from coming into our highest version of self.
So at the root of this is anti-self and anti-self is a very big conversation. Most people are operating inside of an anti-self virus or parasite, whatever you want to call it. The anti-self is basically the subconscious. So you know when you do something and then your first thought in your head was, I didn't do that good enough. Why aren't I doing this? I feel like I could have done better. That person did better than me. I'm such a loser. I'm such a failure. I can push harder. I'm weak. All of these things we tell ourselves, that is our subconscious that has been very programmed because the subconscious is programmable and it's very susceptible. When we are in tranced states, watching TV on our phones, we kind of create these neural networkings within the brain, within the mind to have belief systems. And so these belief systems will project onto us these anti-life belief systems, these anti-self belief systems, which are essentially anti-life. And so these belief systems will, like I just said, be those qualities and it'll just really create this hollowness inside of the being where you're in pain and you feel like your worth comes from other people's validation of you. Your value comes from other people telling you, informing you that yes, I see the worth in you, so you must, you, like, you must have value. You know, but truly that comes from you and that comes from God because if you're born, if you were born and if you're watching this, you have immeasurable worth and you are so valuable to life because you were born, period. But we look for it in other people. We look for relationships to validate us. We look for careers to make us feel important. We look for things outside of us to initiate this sense of worth. And I think to a certain degree that that is okay in the, in the beginning. Because if we're coming from nothing, then we need to understand, yes, I have worth. But truly, and, and this is the bones, this is the crux of any structure, of any building. If you look at like a building, you know, it has cement, the, like, the stability of the building, the base, the foundation has to be firm so that the, the building can be strong and not like fall over. And that is the same within the, the human, the person. They have, you have to have a strong foundation, a strong sense of self, of worthiness, of value to be able to be strong and tall and to be of service in this lifetime and to be of authenticity in this lifetime. And it's the same with a tree. It has roots and they grow down into the ground and they hold them steady. And this tree just flourishes and does magnificent things. So one practice we can do is looking at our roots. So what are our roots? So one of my roots, and I think that everybody should have this root, it's like probably the most important, like you will get the most nourishment from this root. It's like a thick root, okay? So this is the first root. And it is your connection to God, your connection to source. The reason that this is so important is because it gives us purpose it gives us fulfillment and it gives us inspiration like it gives us everything it's life for us right so source is so powerful to reconnect ourselves to so that we can start moving out of this anti-life out of this atheism which in my opinion is really toxic to hold on to because I just can't comprehend how somebody <laughs> I'm really sorry if you're watching this and you're atheist and you're you're trying if you're okay this is why I believe that I believe that because if you are living inside of a reality where the body dies it decomposes and you are gone it just doesn't make sense because we are so vast and yes, we should start merging science with spirituality because that is going to create epic, epic evolutionary progression. But, you know, based on science, like there's no, there's no concept inside of 
what the body can perceive and what the soul can perceive so it's understandable some people just have no understanding of afterlife but to me that is like there's just terror inside of that people are so scared of death because they think that they're just they're just gonna like disappear into nothingness and to, and that honestly says that you are nothingness already which is the reversal of what we know <laughs> which is we are everything <laughs> i'm falling so so yes little ramble there what are our roots our roots okay so source can be one of them another one can be your sensuality okay self-love i am beautiful i am nourished i am divine things like that that create this worth and this love for self and this desire for life and for yourself because we should desire ourselves like that really projects you onto this path of of wanting to go harder and you can go harder because you're just in love with yourself okay <laughs> and another one what's another root um another root could be movement studies learning curiosity things that nourish you things that bring you this life force that you need because to really operate outside of anti-life we need to be in love with ourselves and we need to feel that nourishment from source and from ourselves so that we can really just thrive and those are our roots and those are our like our foundation okay and without these work we're, we're empty and we can become hollow and so like this last week and I say this with <laughs> love in my heart and I, I know I'm kind of teaching in these videos and I'm just being vulnerable, but you know, I'm still very much so on my own healing journey and I feel like I'm at the very, very, very beginning of it. And to some people, maybe that seems, no, you're not. But to me, it's true because, well, first of all, as we cycle through these processes the cells die and then they're reborn and then they die and then they're re reborn and for me right now at the space that i'm in i'm kind of being reborn and i literally feel like i'm having an identity crisis not gonna lie <laughs> so <laughs> there's that but i came to this place the last week where my love reservoir my self-love reservoir was so empty that i was being targeted through what the false matrix projects at us. So anti-self, anti-life, you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not confident enough, you could never be confident enough. You can't speak in front of others. Good luck trying to be a leader, like. <laughs> so I was like feeling like, oh my God, I can't do this. I'm, But yet I'm really projecting forward into this path, but I was crumbling because my foundation was weak. And so that comes from self-love. And so I'm really practicing this too, guys. And I have a lot of work I need to do on the anti-self virus and the subconscious mind. And there is a collective karmic energy of this darkness, of this unworthiness. And it's, it's global. It affects everybody. And... I'm going to say this on here because it'll hold me to it and I know I'm going to do it. I'm really working on, you know, mastering that state and I want to bring these these frequencies forward to support other people through their own healings of whatever it is that you're going through. I want to I want to show up for you and I know that anti-self is huge and it, you know, if you've ever dealt with depression and anxiety then you've had this virus. Any and which is like like everybody everybody has had these these illnesses before and it stems from this lack of self-love and it's it's really really important that we do that so some things that you can do to start your processing 
with self-love is to go into a meditative state and just bathe yourself in the thought, I am love. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Think of, think of something that you feel vulnerable about, witness it, and then literally hold yourself and say, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I'm holding you here. I love you. And the more we do that, the more confident we build, confidence we build in ourselves in the fact that we are lovable, we are nourishable, and we're whole. Even if, even if these thoughts that you do not have to claim these thoughts, these thoughts are not you, if they're telling you you'll never be lovable, you'll never get through this, this is the end, you've already been overtaken by this, you're guilty, you're evil, whatever these thoughts are saying to you, there can be dark thoughts out there, right? So whatever they're saying to you, do not identify with them because the mind, like I said in the beginning, has been infiltrated with these dark realities, with these falsities, with these matrices that work inside of a shadow consciousness. So they are really broken down, they're hurt, they're hurting, they're desperate to be seen and they'll say crazy things to get your attention like oh did that did that scare you okay good come this way listen to this now right so whatever they can do to get your attention they will and if they notice that you're like oh my god what, what did i just think that they're like good good yes you did think that sorry i'm falling um so yeah guys coming to an end with this video Please, please do that if you feel called to, is do some self-loving. Um, give yourself a massage, uh, take a bath, read a book, get a massage from somebody else. You're worthy. You're worthy of love. You're worthy of being loved by your friends, by your family, <clears throat> by lovers, by friends. Whatever it is that you need, you are worthy of it. So worthy of it, just by existing. And some other clearings you can do are um, envisioning white light flowing into your body from the crown down. White light and you can say, I clear all energy that does not belong to me. And that should initiate the repair of your body, the repair of your heart. Anything that you need, you are worthy of, you are deserving of. I'm here for you if you need me. You can find me at Grace Crysdale. If you liked this video, please thumbs it up and subscribe. And I'm gonna get off of this dirt. I gotta wipe my butt off. And I wish you guys well. Much, much love.